Hi everyone. Today the flip learning method method of teaching we are using. The topic for the flip learning is force measurement. Here, uh, we are going to study the force, torque and power. Uh, here, force, we have an equation which is derived from Newton's second law, F equal to MA, mass into acceleration. So, already in our previous class, class, we categorized or differentiated the force versus pressure. Here, why we need to measure the force? Um, uh, for any operation while making any component, we are using metal farming or metal machining process. In metal farming process, if you are applying excessive force to the component that will be formed residual stress, so that is dangerous while going for real time application. Similarly, while doing machining also, we need to apply the appropriate force. Otherwise, it will not facilitate the green manufacturing. So green manufacturing means achieving the required machinability with minimal power. So this is the concept of green manufacturing. Uh, there, if you are allowing more forces on the chip tool contact, uh, the friction between the cutting tool and workpiece is more, therefore higher high temperature is generated. At the higher temperature tool wear rate also more, we will get the build up edge formation. So uh, worn out tool material, build up edge uh, formation, everything deposited over the surface and uh, spoil the surface finish. So therefore you cannot get the good surface finish if you are applying more force. At the same time, not only surface the uh, surface roughness spoiling and the tool wear rate also more because of excess force. So now it is uh, required to measure the force. Here uh, we can do the we can measure the force in cutting operation. We have a lathe tool dynamometers and drilling. We have a dynamometers to measure the torque and thrust acted on the workpiece material. So here, um, if you are allowing excess force, we will face the problem in terms of residual stress formation. This residual stress formation while going for application, so there uh, the failure is initiated. So because of the reason why we are going to measure the pressure force. Once if you are measuring the force, then what happened? We can control the force so that we can um, apply the required power to get the machining or forming the component. So this is the reason why you are studying the force measurement. In my first slide, here an engineer is concerned not only with the generation of power prime mover but also require measure the useful output. So output measurement is very important that helps the engineer to know how well prime mover is doing its job in relation to energy supplied. So everything it is rated in terms of power. So first uh, if you are uh, seeing the force, so force represent the mechanical quantity which uh, changes tend to change our relative motion or shape of the body on which it is acted. So force it is the vector component and completely it is having magnitude, point of application, line of action and direction. The relationship between the motion and force provided by law of dynamics, I think we have, we have studied in Newton's second law of motion states that force is directly proportional to rate of change of momentum. Therefore, uh, finally, rate of change of momentum is the uh, mass MA. So from F equal to MA, that equation is derived from the this, this Newton's second law. Then coming to the work, work represent the product of force into displacement. What, uh, what is the force applied? Because of force, how much distance the object is traveled in the particular, uh, particular direction. Work done equal to force into displacement. So this is our equation W equal to Fs. The unit of work is called Joule. 
1 joule equal to 1 newton meter coming to the torque it represents the amount of the twisting effort and uh, numerically you call it product of force into moment of uh, moment of form or particular dist distance from the point of rotation from the application of force so here uh, normally torque it is called as the force acting radial force and the distance radial force into distance it is the equation to determine the torque value then power is rate of doing work rate of doing work already work done we have seen per uh, specified time how much work is carried out this indicates the power so therefore it is clearly given power is the rate of doing work and is obtained by dividing the work done by time the unit for power is watt kilowatt megawatt watt represents the work equal of 1 joule 10 per second then coming to the force measurement we can measure the force by various parameters various responses so first one balancing the force against a known gravitational force on a standard mass so balancing the force against the known gravitational force so this uh, particular principle it is applied in uh, uh, the weight scale or uh, balances the balances physical balance or all the weight scales available in our uh, vegetable market or all the places the translating the next one is translating force so translating the force to a fluid pressure force is converted as a fluid pressure from the pressure value we are going to estimate the force applied then third category is the some elastic member then measuring the result what is called the proving ring and we have a spring balance you know we, we have spring balance does not require any weight or any chain it is very simple just hold your load and uh, directly you can measure it so whenever load is released again the member uh, the spring automatically it will goes back into original position so typical example proving ring this is going to discuss in later slide applying the force to a known mass and measuring the resulting acceleration so here um, known mass and measuring the acceleration we know the equation f equal to ma uh, if the mass is kept constant based on the acceleration we can able to measure the applied force then balancing the force against magnetic force developed by the inter interaction of magnet current carrying the carrying the coil then we have a mini category elastic force meter elastic force meter we have the elastic force meter of course it is used in uh, spring balance so there they are using the elastic element spring lord cantilever simply supported beam ring below diaphragm bellows diaphragm can be used in measurement of force or directly indirectly through the displacement of elastic limit so here if you are uh, seeing the diagram so initially it will be without stretching initially the spring it will be like this this is called the elastic force meter whenever you are connecting with the load then it will make the displacement force you exert on the spring so force the spring exert in you so this is the original dimension of the spring before applying load after applying load so this is called stretching again the elastic force it is the matter it is considered el elastic if it returns to its original shape after squeezed or stretched so here you have a spring balance whenever you are releasing the load automatically it will go back into this original position then again compression is an elastic force that uh, squeezes or pushes the matter together compression is an elastic force that squeezes or pushes the matter together this kind of compressive uh, two wheeler shock absorber they are using compression spring so whenever load is acted then what happened when it comes to equilibrium position again it is goes back into original position so coming to the tension tension and elastic force that stretches pulls matter so this is the tensile load load acting because of gravity then uh, which is pulls the load towards the down direction so that it is getting stretched this is uh, stretching happening because of tensile load some uh, typical two wheeler shock absorber everything well, compressive load is acting then coming to the scales and balance so this uh, scale balance everything usually we are seeing in all the vegetable market or everything uh, you have a fulgram center of the fulgram you have a pointer so here you are keeping standard mass for example 1 kg 2 kg something here we are keeping our unknown mass and weighing 
so until equivalent to this uh, weight loaded here we are adding finally pointer comes to at uh, center middle position so that uh, indicates the your standard mass and unknown mass both are equal therefore uh, this is the way to estimate the load so here the theory it is clearly given the equilibrium exists when the clockwise rotating equals anti clockwise rotary moment m1 l1 m2 l2 here you have a two arms two arms l1 l2 both are equal both are equal uh, so finally the unknown force so further to given location attraction acts equally on both both the masses therefore at equilibrium condition w equal to w2 l1 l2 both are equal distance so that what happened it is the l1 l2 getting cancelled so m1 equal to m2 so m is multiplied with g if you are considering g it is called as oh w1 equal to w2 therefore unknown force or weight equals to force or weights so this is the simple concept behind the spring balance scales scales and balance so this is completely happening this is completely following the gravitational force gravitational force so if you want to say real time application the weight scale used at uh, markets and uh, shopping mall different places they are using so this is the typical image uh, is called the proving ring uh, this is the photographic view of the proving ring. Normally, this proving ring is used to uh, calibrate the UTM ultimate tensile stress. So, here uh, you have a, a dial indicator, you have a circular ring. So, here this place we are going to act the load. So, whenever acting the load, this circular shape it will be changed into wall shape. Therefore, uh, there is some displacement is there. Based on the displacement of uh, the ring from original shape into final shape due to loading it is measured this displacement difference it is uh, helping us to measure the force now coming to the theory of the proven ring the proven ring we have a uh, here you have, we are applying the force projection lug right here uh, then you have a circular ring here we are keeping the displacement cells are what is called lvdt this uh, displacement cells are it is helping us to measure the change in displacement Initially, it is a circular shape. Whenever you are applying the load, it then it becomes getting compressed. The ring is getting compressed. So, it is made it into a oval shape. So, the LVDT available here, it will uh, it will measure the displacement. From the displacement, displacement value, displacement of the ring value, it is helping us to measure the force. So, here, uh, first point is clearly given. Your ring is used for calibrating tensile testing machine calibrating purpose whether the uh, tensile testing machine is working or not it works on principle of lvdt which senses the displacement caused by the force resulting in a proportional voltage so here uh, based on the displacement it will generate some proportionally generate some voltage so that uh, voltage from the voltage value you can convert into the load it is provided with the projection lugs for loading and lvdt is attached with the internal uh, uh, with the integral internal forces C and D here they are clamping the LVDT sensor uh, when the forces are applied through the integral external forces the A, B these forces we are apply, whenever we are applying the load the diameter of the ring changes depending upon the application of the load which is known as the ring deflection then coming to the proving ring calibration Proving rings are calibrated in accordance with the procedure established by the ASTM uh, in a standard designated 7475. Uh, the standard practice of calibration force measuring instrument for verifying the force indicating the tension mission, tensile mission. So this is one of the standard calibration technique to test the tensile, uh, tensile mission. The proving rings are often used. So now uh, we are coming to the application where we can use proving rings are often used to calibrate amount of force used within the various force testing devices. Once the calibration is set, other material is uh, other materials are placed in the device, and it is possible to see if they can withstand the same force that was being applied to the proving ring. In this way, scientists can determine the exact strength of various materials. So this is the some of the applications where it is used apart from the tensile testing machine calibration technique. Then next uh, we are going to the load cell. So now uh, elastic uh, meters, proving ring, everything we have seen. So next uh, we are moving to the load cell. Load cell is a transducer that is used to create the electrical signal whose magnitude is directly proportional to the force being measured. 
so load cell it is helping us to measure the the force applied force applied on the uh, the various component uh, we have different types of load cells are there strain gauge load cell hydraulic load cell pneumatic load cell magneto elastic load cell piezoelectric fiber optic then resonant but in our syllabus we have we are going to study strain gauge hydraulic pneumatic and magneto elastic load cell so coming to the hydroelectric uh, elastic load cell so this is the diagram we have so here there is a indicator here there is a cylinder here you have a piston so here they are keeping a stopped structure supported structure so that does not allow the pin move this direction so now uh, you keep your hydraulic the hydraulic load cell that name hydraulic indicate that we are using some fluid so we here we are keeping our fluid this end is is a supported structure this structure does not allow the piston to move this direction so now what happen uh, whatever force thrust force you want to apply you need to apply here because of pressure applied here the fluid available because of the volume change the fluid is getting pressurized and it is moving up so this pressure is uh, measured by using some pressure gauge so here through uh, fluid pressure through fluid pressure we are going to measure the applied load this is the simple principle let us go to the text when a force is applied to the liquid medium contained in confined space confined means the fixed space the pressure of the fluid increases this is the typical example we have seen in hydraulic press the hydraulic uh, fluid is there whenever we are pressing the pump the fluid is actuated then it is moving it is moving the punch to come down so that we are getting the shearing force the increase in pressure of the liquid proportional to the applied force hence measure of increase in pressure of the liquid becomes the measure of applied force when it is calculated so here uh, i think the uh, different way we need to measure the force here based on the fluid pressure or based on depending upon the load we will get the various pressure so from the pressure variation we can able to quantify the force applied here so this is the simple logic then next i go to the pneumatic load cell so as the name indicated it is called uh, the compressive air is used so here you have a diaphragm here you have a diaphragm here the air is supplied this air we are supplying it is stored here so pressure of the air you have other indicator to measure so here pneumatic uh, load cell also operate force balance principle the force is applied one side of the diaphragm so here you have a diaphragm here we are applying the force um, force so one side of the diaphragm of flexible material diaphragm itself it's a flexible material so after applying the load then again what happened the diaphragm should come back should come back to original position so flexible material and balanced by the pneumatic pressure on the other side so here you have a pneumatic pressure the counteracting pressure the force required to uh, counteract the load applied this direction is measured so automatically the counteracting pressure is directly proportional to force so this is uh, indicated displayed in the pressure dial pressure indicator again i repeat so here you have a diaphragm here we are keeping our working fluid so here we are supplying air then it is completely closed now if you are applying any load one side of the diaphragm then what happen it is getting it is moved uh, moving down so that the fluid available here it is getting compressed so here there is a counteracting pressure it is acted to balance to resist the information uh, diaphragm diaphragm so the counteracting pressure is proportional to the force so here we are measuring the counteracting pressure based on the counteracting pressure value we are going to measure the the load applied here load applied on the diaphragm uh, now the another uh, important load cell is the strain gauge based strain gauge everything already we studied so strain gauge means we need to just for uh, just paste over the component whenever applying the load if any deformation is applied immediately it will start to some strain value change in length and the original value normally we need to take the some uh, cylinder made by the steel so then we need to uh, keep our strain gauge strain gauges you need to place like this then we are applying if you are looking the top view of the uh, the cylinder it will be like this so this is the strain gauge r1 r r1 r2 r3 r4 we have a strain gauges strain gauges now if you are applying load whatever uh, strain indicated uh, strain indicator so directly you can able to measure so here the concept is very simple based on the 
the deviation in the strain value deviation in the strain value we are going to measure the force so this is the electrical load cell so here uh, deformation i think the strain value now we are not directly measuring based on the deformation then uh, emf is induced from the emf we are going to measure the force so uh, coming to the text here strain gauge is a device used to measure the strain of an object and convert the load acting uh, convert the load acting on them into electrical signal so here the outcome it will be in the form of electrical signal so of course you know more than 90 percent of the the measurement it is based on the electrical signal so it is more reliable otherwise if you are using mechanical based uh, mechanical based it will have a required maintenance war and tear everything is there so converting them into electrical signal it is uh, it is more reliable more accurate when compared to mechanical so that it is preferred due to due to the application of load strain changes the electrical resistance we see we seen already we have a material whenever we are applying the load then uh, what happened the if you are uh, supplying power we will get the variation in the resistance so here uh, uh, because of strain the electrical resistance value is changed uh, that is proportional to the applied load so, so the resistance electrical resistance generated is directly proportional to applied load if you are able to quantify the electrical resistance uh, electrical resistance we can able to measure the applied load so so that here electrical resistance we are looking so that this is a electrical devices but here strain gauge we are going to use so here what happened we are pasting our strain gauge applying load the change in dimension that uh, strain based on the strain value emf is generated so that uh, resistance value getting varied from the resistance value change we are getting the required force value then the probably this is the final the magneto elastic load cell so this is uh, not available in syllabus but uh, we need to study here uh, here i think magneto elastic means we are uh, selecting a material magnetic material uh, whenever uh, we are applying load or uh, stressed then what happened we will get the uh, variation magnetic force variation so that is helping us to measure from the text uh, we know that magnetic permeability of the ferromagnetic material changes when sub subjected to the stress. The magnetic permeability it will not be uniform. If you are without applying load, the permeability value uh, it is different. Whenever the material is subjected to some load, then what happened? We can uh, the permeability, magnetic permeability value it is uh, changing. So they are, therefore, uh, if you are uh, changing, if you are able to monitor the magnetic permeability, so easily you can able to measure the applied load now uh, from the text it is clearly given the load cell is built from stack of ferromagnetic lamination forming a load bearing column so here you have a bearing column a set of primary and the secondary transformer coil oriented at the 90 degree so here you look at the 90 degree orientation and wound through the holes of the column here what happened whenever it is unstressed it will be like this so that uh, your um, magnetic permeability value it is unique so that you can quantify whenever it is stressed we can get the permeability value change so whenever uh, based on the change before applying the load after applying the load if you are able to differentiate the magnetic permeability value that is helping us to measure the load so the torsion so now up to load cell i am finishing this so uh, the students those who are uh, missed going to miss for your uh, training and placement program so kindly you can uh, this video clip it will be uploaded to your uh, whatsapp group kindly go through it so that um, uh, you you will uh, you will not have a feel that i did not attend the class like that. thank you thank you Javagar? Javagar? Thank you.